uh, we're going to jump right into PDJ. And what we're going to do is we're going to continue on with Psalm 40. Psalm 40. So I'm excited about that. So if you have your Bibles, turn to Psalm 40, and we've been reading between verses um, 1 through 9, and we'll probably continue on after this, uh, a little bit past that. Um, we might just do the whole psalm, but I, I love this psalm. I love the psalm of David, and um, I love what what it says within the psalm, and we've been on this the last um, couple um, PDJs, but let's jump in. Um, verse 1, I waited patiently for the Lord, and he inclined to me and heard my cry. He also brought me up out of a horrible pit, out of the miry clay, and set my feet upon a rock, and established my steps. He has put a new song in my mouth, praise to our God. Many will see it in fear and will trust in the Lord. Blessed is that man who walks, who, who makes the Lord his trust. Blessed is that man who makes the Lord his trust and does not respect the proud nor such as turn aside to lies. Many, O Lord my God, are your wonderful works which you have done and your thoughts toward us cannot be recounted to you in order. If I would declare and speak of them, they are more than can be numbered. Sacrifice and offering you did not desire, my ears you have opened. Burnt offering and sin offering you did not require. Then I said, Behold, I come. In the scroll of the book it is written of me. I delight to do your will, O oh my God, and your law, your law, which is your word, God, is within my heart. I have proclaimed the good news of righteousness in the great assembly. Indeed, I do not restrain my lips. O Lord, you yourself know. And, and we left off right there at verse 6. We talked a little bit about verse 6, but, but I want us to, to go a little bit further because I, I want us to really understand sacrifice and offering you did not desire. And you have to understand it was at the time that within the temple that they had sacrifice and they had offerings and this was a commandment by the Lord that you bring your sacrifice, you bring your offering and we, we, we have to realize that, that God was requiring that, right? This is, this is David. It talks about burnt offering and sin offering because it talks about this is something that they were doing at that time that they were they were bringing and making sacrifices and we have to understand like the burnt offering this refers to the regular daily offerings within the temple and then the sin offering an offering intended to restore ritual purity so they were doing these so so how can david write sacrifice and offering you did not desire my ears you have opened burnt offering and sin offering you did not require think about that because we left off that God desires obedience, right? So if he desires obedience and then he commands for sacrifice and offering, and it says, David saying that you do not desire. So I, how, how do we put this together, right? How, 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 do, how can we understand this in a whole? And, and, and we have to, we have to, to take a look at this and we, that's why we have to read the Bible and study the Bible because it says sacrifice and offering you did not desire. But I know that God's requiring the sacrifice and offering. I know he's requiring burnt offerings, which they do daily. I know that he requires a sin offering because Yeshua hasn't come at this moment. Although we're saved by the coming of the Messiah, they were just as we are saved by that Messiah has already come and, and fulfilled a, the, the, the covenant, the new covenant. So what's he saying? And I, I love the fact that the key point here is my ears you have opened. Because see, it says in 1 Samuel 15, 22, So Samuel said, Has the Lord as great delight in burnt offerings and sacrifices as in obeying the voice of the Lord? Behold, to obey is better than sacrifice and to heed than the fat of rams. So we see obedience is better, right? It says in Isaiah 1, 11 through 17, To what purpose is the multitude of your sacrifices to me, says the Lord? I have had enough of burnt offerings of rams and fat of fed cattle. I do not delight in the blood of bulls or of lambs or goats. When you come to appear before me, who has required this from your hand to trample, um, to trample my courts? Bring no more futile sacrifices. There's a key there. Futile sacrifices. 
Incense is an abomination to me. The new moons, the Sabbaths, and the calling of assemblies. I cannot endure iniquity and the sa sacred meeting. Your new moons and your appointed feast, my souls hate. They are trouble to me. I am weary of bearing, bearing them. When you spread out your hands, I will hide my eyes from you. Even though you make many prayers, I will not hear. Your hands are full of blood. Wash yourselves. Make yourselves clean. Put away the evil of your doings from before my eyes. Cease to do evil. Learn to do good. Seek justice. Rebuke the oppressed. Defend the fatherless. Plead for the widow. Think about that. God isn't pleased with that. God's not happy with that. Although God's saying, uh, you know what? I, I need you to come with your sacrifice, your burnt offerings, and I need you to come with your sin offering. So what is God really saying within this, this passage right here? What is God really trying to say that obedience? What, what God is trying to say, and, and, and whenever David said, my ears, you have opened. What he's saying is uh, he does not want an individual coming after just rituals, traditions, religious spirits. He's saying, you know, I, 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 I want a heart after me. I want the heart, the right heart in the midst of this matter. See, he wants a heart, not rituals. Do you understand that? The rituals do not mean anything. The traditions do not mean anything. What I've told you to do means nothing if the heart's not connected. If there's not a heart issue, if your heart's not connected to me, then, then what good is it? So what good is the sacrifice or, or your offering if your heart is not connected to him? Right? Let me go a little bit further. What good is your prayer? Or saying things in the name of Yeshua if your heart's not connected to him. See, what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to get us to, to awake, be, uh, open our ears and, and uh, awake our spirit and, and awake our, our self, our soul. And, and, and what are we doing within life? That's just a ritual. That's just a tradition. That's just a burnt offering, just a sin offering, uh, but it has no heart connection. Do you really think the burnt offering meant anything or the sin offering if there wasn't a heart connection? Do you really think confessing Yeshua as Lord and Savior is anything without a heart issue, without a heart change, without uh, something touching the heart, without the heart connected? We talked about that. The heart and the mind has to be connected. The heart and the mind cannot operate without itself. We've talked about this in previous messages on Sunday. So our actions has to be connected with our heart or it's just an action. It means nothing. Think about that. How many times have you just prayed because you, you just thought, well, I just need to pray. Or you feel bad that you haven't spent time with the Lord, so you just, it's a five minutes, it's, it's, a, a, it's something that doesn't have any meaning. There's no attachment within your heart. It's just a ritual. I go to church just because I think that's what God wants. Don't go to church. Let me do you a favor. Save your time. Stop wasting your time. We talked about that time management. We're going to talk about this Sunday time. Time management, your time and wisdom. Uh, so just stay home if that's all you're doing. Because I don't want you wasting your time because you're not doing it out of the right heart. I want you in church because you, you want a relationship. You want an encounter with Yeshua. You, you want a fellowship with other believers. You want relationships. That's what I want. That's what Yeshua wants. Jesus. Think about that. What good is prayer if it's not connected with Yeshua? If your heart's not connected? If it's just, Lord, thank you for this day. If there's no meaning. And how many times do we pray by our bedside? How many times do we pray during the day when there's no meaning? Our, our ears are not really opened. I, I'm not really obedient. Right? What good is our prayers if I'm living a life that's not obedient? Maybe I should say that. Right? Is your prayer, oh Lord forgive me, you know what, is that just like a burnt offering and a sin offering that, that God is talking about, but there's really been no change? You go out and you redo it again, and then you come back right again and, and ask for forgiveness? Can I get an amen? I, I'm preaching now. I'm teaching right now. Because this is what God, burnt offering was to forgive sin, right? Sin offering was to forgive sin, right? It was to come to God in an atonement and in, in a forgiveness that I'm sacrificing this. This is what we do whenever we come to God and we ask for forgiveness and it needs to be connected to the heart. 
But that's the thing is too many times if we connect it to the heart, that means my lifestyle has to change. So too many times as Christians, as individuals, we don't connect it to the heart uh, because we, we know we're going to go right back out and do the same thing. And then that would feel, I would feel convicted and I don't want to feel convicted. So, but I don't want to feel convicted that I'm not spending time where I'm not praying with the Lord. So Lord, forgive me. And then we're right back out to the same thing because there's no heart. Think about it. Prayer without ceasing. That's what God said. But if there is not a connection within the heart, then it's just a sacrifice, a burnt offering that God is not pleased with. Think about that. God does not appreciate sacrifices made as an outward expression of religion. Think about that. He does not. Let me just read that again. God does not appreciate sacrifices made as an outward expression of religion. God's not focused on religion. He's focused on your heart. If we are focused on religion, then we're going to be sinners over and over. We'll never have a true repentance. We'll never have a true change of heart. And if we do not have a true change of heart, then we're never going to have a true change of lifestyle. That's why individuals can, oh, Lord, forgive me. That's why uh, there's a denomination that, that, you know what, they're okay with you coming Sunday and you live your life um, however you want throughout the week as long as you come and you, you just ask for forgiveness. That's not a true heart connection. That's religion. That's religion. That's self-indulgence. That's self-pride of I'm, I'm okay, I can do this, and then I can go live however I want. God said to follow him. Yeshua said, follow me. Did you see him at Hooters? Did you see him at, at the X-rated movies? Did you see him watch pornography? Did you see him? I'm just, uh, did you see him in a mist of addiction? Did you see, I, I, we're all sinners. I'm preaching to myself. Don't be casting stones at me. But Yeshua wasn't. And Yeshua says, if I'm, if you, if, if you really love me, you, you're going to follow my commandments. That means there's going to be a change. That means, you know what? My ears, my ears, you have opened, Lord. You have opened my ears. That means, you know what? I'm choosing to please you. That means, I, Lord, help me because there's some things in my life I need changed and I don't know how to change them, right? I'm still cussing. I'm still, still, still lying. I, I, I'm still lusting. I'm still, but Lord, I, I love you and I need your help. That, that's an honest heart. It's kind of like the two individuals that, that Yeshua gave in, as an example. You have the Pharisee that, you know what, I, I'm not like him and, and you know what, I, I'm not like that. And I know your word, but you might know the word, but you're not living according to the word. That's why he called them hypocrites and vipers. Yeah, you know the word, your sacrifices, your offerings, but they mean nothing to me because there's not a heart connection. There's not a change. I'm pushing you this year that we need a relationship with Yeshua. There's things coming. I've told you before the beginning of the year that there's famines. There's rumors of war. There's things that we are going to go through as a nation, as a country, as a family, as a body of Christ. And it's going to take a relationship with Yeshua to get through it. It's going to take a relationship with Yeshua to be fed from the heavens. Because he's going to feed those that choose to believe and have the faith, that choosing to have a heart after him. Because he said to the other person that, you know what, the, the one that was praying right beside the Pharisee, the Sadducee, Sadducee, that, you know what, couldn't he lift up his head? I'm a sinner, Lord. Forgive me. It, God, God hears that. That was a heart. His ears were open. Think about it. My ears have opened. It, 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 you could say it kind of refers back to Exodus 21, 6. And if you don't know what Exodus 21, 6 is, let me just read it. Then his master shall bring him to the judges. This is whenever there was a slave that was purchased. And at a certain time, you can go free. But there's times that the slaves didn't want to go free because they had it made. And I don't want to hear, it wasn't about African Americans, it wasn't about whites. It, it, this is a Jewish culture. This is Israel, where there were slaves, where people were bought, purchased, where there's, there's you know what, masters. And, you know, and the slave decided that, you know what, I, I'm okay right here serving you, working for you. My life's great, my family's great, you take care of me. Don't tell me we don't do that to a job. Oh, I'm okay right here, and I, I'm just going to, I'm going to work for this master. Because that's what you're doing, right? I want us to be real. 
It says, Then his master shall bring him to the judges. He shall also bring him to the door or to the doorpost, and his master shall pierce his ear with an awl, and he shall serve him forever. So David is kind of reflecting back that, you know what, you know what, my ears you have opened. You have purchased me with a price. I am yours forever. Let me be your slave. Let me be your child. Let me, let me serve you forever. And go ahead and put the mark on me. That's the blood of Yeshua. If you need to pierce my ear, let, let people know that I serve Yeshua. See, that's the problem this day and time. Oh, I'm getting a little excited here. That's the problem this day and time is we're so afraid to let others know that I serve Yeshua, that I serve a God that's able to do all things, that I can stand out. Whether it's manifested or not, God is still sovereign. God is still God. He's still a healer. He's still a provider. He's still a savior. And it's up to him whatever he wants to do. But it's for me to stand for the word. It's for me to confess and proclaim him as Yeshua. That's what David was saying. David was never afraid. Maybe that's why he had a heart after God. Because he, he would confess God. You know, go ahead and pierce my ear. Let everybody know that I'm a slave to Yeshua. Let everybody know that I love the Lord God. You know what? Does everyone know that you love the Lord God? Or, or is he kind of a hidden God? See? Basically saying you have bound me as a slave to yourself. That's really what Yeshua says. Come follow me, right? Do what I do. It, it sounds like the parable that, you know what? The vine, the tree, the branches, the roots. He cannot do anything outside of the Father. The Father can't do anything outside of Yeshua. And I'm grafted in and, and I'm part of Yeshua. I become one. Uh, you know, I, he's my owner. He's my God. I, I want to be a part of him. It's kind of DNA. It's kind of like a spouse. Marriage, right? We, we become as one. I become as one when I'm grafted in and I accept Yeshua. So I'll, I'll be a slave to my master. I'll be a slave to Yeshua. I'll be a child to Yeshua. I'll be obedient. I, I, my ears have been open. So now I can go and I can come to you with a, a burnt offering. I can come to you with a sin and sin sin offering. I can come to you with a sacrifice, a contrite heart, a broken spirit. You know, oh, you know, oh, I, I can come to you with a sacrifice, my heart, me, my repentance, and I can come and bow down with tears. Lord, forgive me. Forgive me, for I shall. <laughs> oh, I, I do not know what I, I do. I Oh, I shall serve you. I shall worship you. Forgive me. I love you. We can come with our prayers because they're attached to our heart. And when prayers are attached to our heart, we have an expectation because we know God's able to. Think about it. Think about David's heart when you read these Psalms. See, you have to think of the individual. When he's hiding in a cave, when he's sitting on the throne, when things aren't going good, when things are going really good, where, where, where's his mindset at? Lord, you're not pleased with these sacrifices when they're not, not attached to the heart. They're meaningless. Our prayers are meaningless when it's not attached to our heart. See, God wants the heart. God wants the heart. See, I love what verse 7, then I said, Behold, I come. In the scroll of the book, it is written of me. I delight, verse 8, I delight to do your will. Oh my God, and your law is within my heart. Think about that. David is presenting himself to the Lord. That's what he's saying. Then I said, behold, I come in the scroll of the book, of book it is written of me. Man, I, I'm in the book of life. And since I'm in the book of life, that means I'm being obedient to God's word. That means I'm coming with my heart, just not, not a sacrifice and, and a sin offering and, and religious and traditional things that, that means nothing that has no heart attachment. That means when I come in with repentance, there's a heart attachment. That means there's a change in my lifestyle. Whether it happens right away or not, God knows the heart. That's why we can't judge. Because David was a sinner. You might be judging someone that's in the midst of sin, but their heart loves the Lord and they're struggling and they're trying. What if we chose not to judge and cast stones? Stop being like the Pharisees and the Sadducees and we just say, man, you are forgiven and let me help you. Let me guide you. Let me pick up your burdens. Let me, let me work with you through this thing. What if we as Christians, as a church, did this? 
We're all sinners. No one's above that. No one is a savior. Yeshua is the savior. Think about that. And he's able to forgive over and over and over. What if we chose to do that? And then what if we chose to, you know what, present ourselves to the Lord that, you know what, Lord, you're everything. You have my heart. Uh, let me just read this again. Verse 7 and 8. Psalms 40, verse 7 and 8. Then, then I said, behold, I come in the scroll of the book. It is written of me. I delight to do what? Your will. Your will, God. Oh, my God. In your law, your law, the commandments, teaching and instruction, the Torah, the word of God is within my heart. Think about that. Think about that. So let me read this in closing. Hebrews 10, 5 through 7. Therefore, when he came into the world, he said, Sacrifice and offering you did not desire but a body you have prepared for me. In burnt offerings and sacrifices for sin, you had no pleasure. Then I said, Behold, I have come. In the volume of the book, it is written of me to do your will, O God. So what's God's will? What's pleasing? It's, it's a heart coming after God. It's surrendering and knowing that we are purchased with the price, that, you know what, my repentance is just useless if it's not attached to a heart, if there's not a heart change. And you can tell if there's a heart change by if there's a lifestyle change. Yeah, but I'm trying, I'm trying, but you're trying. That makes the difference, right? See, God knows. What am I trying to tell you? I want our ears to be open. I want us to take a look at our lives do we just come to the Lord with a, a sacrifice and a burnt offering that doesn't please Him? Are we coming with the repentance that doesn't please Him? Because it's really not attached to the heart because we know we're going to go right back out tomorrow or later to do that. Have you ever had those people in your life that they're repenting before they go to the club? Is there really a repentance of that? <laughs> is, it, what, is there a heart connection to that? Is there a heart connection that you lie and lie and lie and lie and then you just repent afterwards? Can you really go and repent on, on one day to your church or to someone and, and then live the rest of your week however you want? No, no, I'm here to tell you that's not following God. That's not obedience. He's not happy with that. I'm telling you, if we as individuals accept Yeshua as Lord and Savior, that means I need to follow Him. And, and that doesn't mean I'm not going to fall short. I am going to fall short. I fall short. I ask for repentance. But when I come to repentance, I'm wanting a heart change. I'm asking God to take the door and just destroy that door that needs to be destroyed and, and open up another door. And, you know, whatever needs to be done, I do not want to sin against you. And I find myself that, you know what, it might be another week or two weeks or, or it might be that in just in another hour I'm doing something stupid again. But, but, but God knows my heart. Does God, know, does God know, know your heart? Does he know your heart whenever it comes to your repentance? Does he know your heart when it comes to your lifestyle? What if we as believers would come with the right heart, not just a sacrifice, not just an offering, not just a, 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 just a, a, just a, a tradition or a religious spirit. What if we came with our heart? Lord, you know I'm busted. You know I'm broken. You, you, you know I'm a sinner. You know my heart's desires. And, and, I want, I want changed and I'm surrendering. I'm surrendering these things to you because I need you to work in my life. I need your help. Invite him in. Just think if we would do this. Think of that. The power, the glory, the move of God within the body. Signs and wonders and miracles within the body of Christ. Just think about that. What if we would all come together one heart and one accord. We're after God. I'm not going to judge. I'm not throwing stones. I'm helping others because I have my own problems. I got my own plank and they only have a speck. And there's been times I've had, I've had more than a plank. I've had two by eights, 12 foot long that I walked around smacking people with my plank because, you know, but I couldn't see it at the time. Amen. But when we realize and we start focusing on ourselves and, and focusing on our heart and our love towards God, our relationship towards God, it opens our ears, it opens our heart, it opens our mind to please Him. And when we do that, 
we see what God has done with David. We see what God has done with Moses. We see what God has done with Elijah in Elijah. We see what God has done with Daniel. We see what God has done throughout his word with all the, the disciples, with all of them, the apostles. Apostle Paul, we see the signs, the wonders, the miracles. We see what God is able to do through a willing vessel. I'm here to tell you, let's choose today to be that willing vessel. Amen. That willing vessel that, that we're going to go out and we're going to do a mighty, mighty work for him. It's about a heart after him. It's not about just a token sacrifice, a token offering. It's about a heart connected to everything that we do. So everything that we do will matter and it will come forth in our lifestyle. Amen. Hey, that's the PDJ for the day. Love you guys. See, I, I believe this was powerful. I believe this is something. And I just know that Satan was in the mist. That's why the printer didn't work. That's why the camera didn't work. That's why we had internet. I mean, just, we had all kinds of problems because that's whenever there's something that God wants to speak, when there's something that God's in the midst of, there's going to be hell broken loose, um, breaking loose in everything. And Satan doesn't want it. And I'm telling you, I, it, this message was for me just as much as it was for you. And this is powerful. This is what God wanted. And and you know what? I just take this and meditate on this day and night. And let's take a look at our lives. What are we doing that is just a token? What are we doing that's just, you know, isn't anything that that no meaning to it, no heart attachment. Amen. Father, we just come before you, Lord, and Lord, I just thank you for your word. I thank you, Father God, Lord, for this PDJ, Father God. I thank you for what you're doing. I thank you, Father God, for your manifestation and your work. And I pray, Father God, for the body of Christ to come together with one accord, Father God, with one heart, Father God, after you, Father God, for your signs and wonders, for your glory, Father God, Lord, to flow through the church, for revival, Father God, for the Shekinah glory, that, Father God, Lord, we are choosing today that it's not going to be a, a sacrifice or an offering that you're not pleased with. It's going to be obedience coming to you, Father God. Lord, with a repentance of obedience to follow your word with a heart change, Father God. And that heart change is going to manifest into a physical change that's going to affect our lifestyle. We thank you. We give you the glory and honor. We thank you for this beautiful week that you've given us in Yeshua's mighty name. Amen. Amen. God is amazing. God is good all the time. You guys have a great day. Remember, this is, um, I, I was thinking we had Wednesday service. I was so pumped for tomorrow night service, but we don't. We do not have Wednesday night service tomorrow because it's the fifth Wednesday of the month. And um, hey, maybe I'll get on and, and just do something online because I was pumped for Wednesday service. Amen. Uh, but no Wednesday service tomorrow night. Back here Thursday morning for prayer. Make sure you submit your prayer request. Love you guys. Don't forget all the women awake awake and it's going to be online so for some reason if you cannot make it you're not able to it will be online awake i need all the women out for awake that can make it or i need you online in the name of yeshua amen amen love you guys bye bye